All right, in this video, I wanna talk about the difference between a confidence interval for a mean response and a prediction interval. And um, the idea is I'm gonna talk about generalized to other models, um, but for the purpose of this video, let's consider just a simple linear regression model. So I have a slope, an intercept, and one predictor, and then a random, um, random epsilon, okay, um, random error. So this random error, epsilon i, we're going to assume that this follows a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared, okay, for i equals one to n. All right. So um, what is a confidence interval for a mean response? Um, first off, let's start with thinking about what does mean response mean? Mean. Um, this is the average response for a particular value of x, right? The average response for a particular value of x. So you give us an x value and um, we'll tell you what the average response is. Um, if this model is, is true, then um, that average um, is actually, it's, it's a fixed number, right? Meaning, um, I should be able to calculate it exactly if I knew this beta naught and beta one. Of course, we don't know these guys. So we're going to have to estimate these guys, right? And so um, what I want to do is I want to construct an interval, right, where 95% of the time that interval is going to be containing that true uh, mean response value. Okay, so how do I do that, right? Um, I want some sort of probability statement. Um, let me, some sort of probability statement where in the uh, center of this probability statement, I have my mean response. And I'm gonna note that with mu, right? Mu stands for mean, um, subscript of y naught, right? And uh, don't let this not get confused with that not. This this is this is the intercept, right? Uh, this not here just means that I don't have to necessarily plug in uh, one of my observed x values. Okay, remember i goes from one to n. Those are our observed x values. Um, this not means you can plug in any value um, for x and then tell me a corresponding y value. Okay, and this is the mean response at that x value. Right, so in general, this is what the confidence interval is. This will be my lower limit of my confidence interval, and this will be my upper limit. Right, and so we have that mean response in the middle. Right, so how does that differ from the prediction interval? So for a prediction interval, um, instead of the mean coming up with a probability statement with mean in the center, I want to come up with a probability statement where I have um, a particular value of y. So this is only one value of y, not the mean value of all the y, y's, but just one, right? And I have some sort of lower limit and some sort of upper limit, right? So what, what's the difference between the mean and then a particular value? So remember the mean. This is the same thing as the expected value of um, y naught, okay? So let's just plug in up here. Let's plug in y, let's plug in a naught for i. So I get the intercept plus the slope, x naught plus epsilon naught. Now the mean of epsilon naught is zero, right? Because epsilon follows a normal distribution. So this is equal to beta naught plus beta one times x naught. All right, so this is the mean, right? So uh, theoretically, if I knew the beta, I could calculate this number. All right, we don't know the beta, so we'll have to estimate this. And that's why we need a confidence interval, okay. So what about over here? Here, I have um, you know, y naught equals beta naught 
plus beta 1 times x naught plus epsilon naught, right? So y is random. Y naught is random. This prediction value, it is random because it includes this epsilon. Okay, so generally, uh, prediction intervals are going to be wider. You're going to be less sure about a particular value of y than you are for the mean value of, of those y's. All right. The interpretation of a prediction interval, I, I will admit, is, I think, less, less straightforward than the interpretation of a confidence interval. Uh, in a confidence interval, we have a fixed value for whatever this mean is, right? And we have random bounds. 95% of the time, that interval that we calculate is going to contain the truth, okay? Here in a prediction interval, um, the this this value of y it is a random number and that's and that's why it's you know the, the the interval itself is going to be you're going to have less certainty about it because it is it is it is not a fixed number it is a random number because it includes this epsilon all right um okay so then from here how do we move forward and like how do we figure out what these bounds are how do we figure out what this lower and upper bounds are for, for both sides? Let's start with um, confidence interval, just you know, kind of generally, how do we do this? Um, if you want to see more details uh, for these calculations, I'm going to provide links in the descriptions of this video. Um, but the general idea is to say, to say, okay, well, I don't know what is beta, right? So I have my model. Uh, and I find a predicted value or an estimated value of beta, and I call this lowercase b. This might be like a least squares estimator, right? And this is my estimate of that mean response, okay? Um, the expected value of this estimate, as long as these are unbiased estimators of beta, this is going to be equal to beta naught plus uh, beta one times x naught. So that's exactly equal to um, this mu y naught, right? It's exactly equal to the mean response. All right, um, and then we can use our distribution assumption for, since um, since the error term is normally distributed, uh, and you can use some properties of the normal distribution. And you can find that um, you know this this y hat equals or it is normally distributed with um, mean uh, with that mean response and then whatever the variance is for y hat, right? And like I said, that's um, takes some work to derive this, and I I'll show that in the description of this video, a video another video that that will show you the details of that. Um, calculation okay so then so this is a normal distribution you can normalize this distribution um, and, which means you subtract off the mean you divide by the um, square root of the variance um, and then this variance since it includes Sigma um, which is unknown you then you can use like um, the standard error which is an estimate of that um, that Sigma and you get a t distribution, which is just kind of a fun um, property of the normal distribution. You can go more into, more into that if you're interested uh, in learning. Um, but basically, once you have a normal distribution and then it's divided by a chi-square distribution, you get a t. Okay. So, but what's important about this is we need some sort of distribution in order for us to make that probability statement at the top. Okay, so then I have this prob probability statement where I'm going to say, okay, so the negative t critical value, and then I have all this stuff here um, in the center times the standard error, or divided by the standard error here, and then I have the positive t critical value, and 
you know, this is just using distributional, you know, this is just using the T distribution. Um, I'm going to set that equal to 0.95. And then from here, you can kind of just rearrange this probability statement using um, algebra, and you'll find, um, you know, this is what the lower limit is secret times SE, right? And then in the center, you have that mean response, and then you have the upper limit, oops, Y hat plus T crit times SE, okay, uh, equals 0.95. And that's how you construct your confidence interval, okay? So you just need some sort of distribution uh, where you can kind of use some fun math and kind of get there. So, but the goal was you have uh, that mean response in the center of a probability statement. Okay. And that's exactly what we need to do now for prediction interval. Same idea. Um, for prediction interval though, uh, if I were to use, let me write this here, um, this y hat not uh, this is my estimate of why not, um, which is uh, B not plus B1 times X not. Um, this is the best estimate that I have. Estimate of why not. Uh, but it does not include that error term. And so, um, you know, I can't. You know, basically, I can't use exactly the same steps that I used here, where I use my distribution of why not, right? So instead, I'm going to need to um, consider the distribution of why not minus why not hat. And then if I figure out the distribution of this, I'll be able to kind of, um, you know, use this algebra where I just kind of rearrange my, my statement. Okay, so... Um, so let's 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 go ahead and consider what is the distribution of this uh, why not minus why not hat what's the distribution of my residual uh, well the expected value of why not minus why not hat is equal to the expected value of why not minus the expected value of why not hat right uh, the expected value of why not uh, I have is why not's up here, so this is this is a fixed, this is fixed, and then the expected value of, of epsilon naught is zero uh, due to that assumption, that normal distribution here. So this will be beta naught plus beta one, x naught, minus, and then my expected value of y naught hat, it's written right here, beta naught plus beta one, x naught, okay? And you can see these guys cancel and you get zero, okay? Now, um, so now we have this why not minus why not hat. This is using prop properties of normal distribution. This is a normal, this is normally distributed. And um, again, this variance of why not minus why not hat takes some work uh, to derive that. So I'll provide the link to that in the description of this video, okay? So here, once again, I can standardize this, and, and then I can plug in my estimate of the variance, and I can get a T distribution once more. Okay, so my estimate would be the standard error. And I'll get a T distribution, and then once more, I can do you know some sort of rewriting here. Um, so I have the probability a negative T crit. I have all this stuff here in the center. And then the positive T crit. And then I'll set that equal to 0.95. Okay. And then you can rearrange this so that you have why not that predicted value in the center. Okay. And you'll get y not hat minus whatever this standard, or sorry, let's start with the t, t critical value, and then the standard error of y not minus y not hat, okay, 
and we have not why not in the center here and then why not plus the t critical value times the standard error of why not minus why not hat okay and then this is equal to 0.95 you set it equal to 0.95 all right, so this is the lower prediction interval. And this is the upper side of the prediction interval. So you can see that these are nearly exactly the same um, in terms of the way they look, prediction and the um, confidence interval. Uh, the main differences are this has the mean in the center, and we have the standard error of why not there, or why not hat. And this is the standard error of why not hat here. And then for the prediction interval, we have that predicted value why not here in the center. And then our standard error is different, right? And this standard error of why not hat is going to be less than the standard error of why not minus why not hat, OK? And again, I'll show um, a link in the description of this video for more uh, discussion of, the, of these two calculations.